Um, Director, thank you for your accessibility. You have been uh, very readily available, and we do appreciate that. Um, this investigation started because the Inspector General found classified information in a non-secure setting, and the FBI went to a law firm and found this information. They seized at least one computer and at least one thumb drive. Did you need an immunity agreement to get those? It, it was not. I don't think there was immunity. In fact, I'm certain there was no immunity agreement used in connection with that. So did it really take the FBI a full year to figure out that Cheryl Mills and Heather Samuelson also had computers with classified information on? No. It took us to that point in the investigation to uh, insist that we try to get them. Were you getting them because they had classified information or because there was some other information you wanted? No, we thought those were the tools, as we understood it, that had been used to sort the emails. And the investigative team very much wanted to understand, if they could, whether there was an electronic uh, what? hail of how that had been done. Because the big, big issue was, what did they delete, what did they keep? And but why did you need an immunity agreement? Why didn't they just cooperate and hand them over? The law firm did, didn't they? Well, yes. The, the, that's a question, really, I can't answer. That's between a lawyer and her client and the Justice Department lawyers. For whatever reason, her lawyer thought it was in her interest to get an active production immunity agreement with the Department of Justice. The FBI interviewed uh, David Kendall's partner, but did not interview David Kendall. Why didn't you interview David Kendall? I don't remember. I don't remember that decision. Going back to this Reddit post, uh, this is put up on July 24th of 2014. You believe this to be associated with Mr. Combetta, correct? Yes, I think that's right. Um, this is the one that Mr. Jordan put up about the need to strip out a VIP's very VIP email address and a bunch of archived email. This is a, f he's uh, referring to a federal record, isn't he? I don't know what, exactly which records he's referring to. How is this not a conscious effort to alter federal records? I mean, the proximity to the date is, is just stunning. I'm sorry, what's the question? How is this not a conscious effort to, to, to alter a federal record? Well, it depends upon what the record was and exactly what he was trying to do and whether there would be disclosure to the people they were producing it to saying we changed this for, public, for privacy purposes. I just don't know sitting here. These are documents that were under subpoena. These federal records were under subpoena. They were on a, under a preservation order. Did Mr. Combetta destroy documents? I don't know whether that was true in July of 2014. They were under subpoena. Did he ultimately destroy federal records, Mr. Combetta? Oh, I have no reason to believe he destroyed federal records he used bleach bit, did he not? Yeah, the question is what was already produced before he used the bleach bit. He definitely, the reason he wanted immunity was he had done the bleach bit business after there was publicity about the demand from Congress for the records. That's a potential. And not just employee. publicity, there was a subpoena. Right, that's potential. And there was communication from Cheryl Mills that there was a preservation order, correct? Yes. And he did indeed use bleach bit on these records. Sure. That's why, so the, guy, he, that's why the guy wouldn't talk to us without immunity. And so when you got immunity, what did you learn? We learned that no one had directed him to do that, that he had done it. He had you, you really think that he just did this by himself? I think his account, again, I, don't, I never affirmatively believe anybody except my, my wife, uh, but, but the question is, do I have evidence to disbelieve him? And I don't. His account is credible, that he was told to do it in 2014, screwed up and didn't do it, panicked when he realized he hadn't, and then raced back in and did it after Congress asked for the records and the New York Times wrote about them. That was his O-S-H-I-T moment. But and that even, was credible. Again, I don't believe people, but I, we did not have evidence to disbelieve that and establish someone told him to do that. No email, no phone call, nothing. The hope was, if he had been told to do that, that would be a great piece of evidence. If we give him immunity, maybe he'll tell us, so-and-so told me to, so-and-so asked me to, and then we're working up the chain. But he did indeed destroy federal records, and he was told at some point to do this, correct? Who told him to do that initially? When he was supposed to do it in December, and he didn't do it. Who told him to do that? One of, one of Secretary Clinton's staff members, I can't remember sitting here, we know that. One of her lawyers might have been Cheryl Mills. Someone on the team said, we don't need those emails anymore, get rid of the archive file. 
This is what's unbelievable about this, because there's classified information, there, is, there are federal records that were indeed destroyed. And that's, uh, that's just the fact pattern. Let's go back to, um, let's go back to this. Uh, here's the other thing that uh, I draw to your attention that is new. September 15th of this year, I issued a subpoena uh, from the Oversight and Government Reform Committee on these Reddit posts, four days later, they were, just, they were destroyed or taken down. They were deleted. I would hope the FBI would take that into consideration. Again, we're trying under a properly issued subpoena to get to this information. Let's go to Heather Mills real quick. How does the, in the 2016 interview with Cheryl Mills, um, she says, quote, Mills did not learn, in the interview report, uh, that you, the interview summary from the FBI, Mills did not learn Clinton was using a private email server until after Clinton's tenure. Back, uh, also, you have this interview with Mr. Pagliano, who said he approached, quote, Pagliano then approached Cheryl Mills in her office and relayed a State Department employee's concerns regarding federal records retention and the use of a private server. Pagliano remembers Mills replying that former secretaries of state had done similar things to include Colin Powell. It goes then on to a page 10, and this is what I don't understand. The FBI writes, Clinton's immediate aides to include Mills, Abedin, Sullivan, and re a redacted name, told the FBI they were unaware of the existence of a private server until after Clinton's tenure at state or when it became public knowledge. But if you look back at the email from, from Heather Mills, if you go back to 2010, this is to Justin Cooper, okay? Mills to Cooper, who does not, she work, he works for Clinton's, he doesn't work for the State Department. FYI, HRC email coming back, is server okay? Cooper writes back, you are funny. We're on the same server. She knew there was a server. When there was a problem with Hillary Rodham Clinton's emails, what did they do? She called the person who has no background in this, who's not a State Department employee, no security clearance, and then tells the FBI, well, I never knew about that. But there's direct evidence that con contradicts this. How do you come to that conclusion and write that in the summary statement that she had no knowledge of this? That's a question. The, yes. time, the time of the gentleman has expired, but the director will answer the question. I don't remember exactly sitting here. All, having done many investigations myself, there's always conflicting recollections of facts, some of which are central, some of which are peripheral. I don't remember sitting here about that one. The chair.